Hello, and welcome to Staring Into the Abyss, a harrowing look into the more disturbing corners of gaming. Um, this is Train Simulator 2016, which is exactly the same as 2015 and 14, and we're looking at it primarily because I have no idea why it exists. Um, I'm not being trainist, you know, if people like trains, that's their bag, whatever, that's fine. Um, but enough jibber-jabber, it's now time to pick up Victoria... Pick up Victoria? Uh, that's a different game. Um, it's now time for us to pick up passengers. So, I can figure this out. I'm a genius. Um, that wasn't the button. It's showing me Xbox button prompts, which is weird. I don't need you. Can I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Presumably, uh, this makes it go. No, 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 don't, no. No. Ah. Oh. Let's try that again. Um, the reason I, I sort of don't get why this is a thing is, you know, maybe you like looking at trains for whatever reason, or maybe you like, you know, something like, uh, Railroad Tycoon kind of makes some sense to me because there's an element of strategy in there and you, it's kind of a, a planning management element. Whereas this, I mean, a train really is either going forwards or going backwards or is completely stopped. And neither of those things is particularly exciting. Um, okay, so we can't go anywhere because the lights are red, presumably. Um, so while we wait, let's see if we can't have a look around. Some scary moonwalking bastards outside that window. Okay, so it's time to pick people up. Are we at... We are at London, Victoria. Okay, so there must be a door release. Let's use Zumo Vision. Uh, 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 uh. Door release. Doors. No. No, come on. Uh, door release. Do no. Oh. Oh. Is that. No. Um. <laughs> Why can't I open the doors? Well, at least that guy knows what he's doing. Um, is it up here? Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the challenge um, for some people. I mean, I honestly thought there would be an open and shut doors button and then a horn and a way to go forwards and to go backwards and to break. And that was kind of it. Um... Oh, we're green. We're green. Green for go. So... No. Forward. Yeah, stop that. Stop that. Oh, yeah. Now we're underway. How do I turn that fucking noise off? Oh, I can't let you do that, Dave. Hmm. Okay. That... that's... Let's take it up to a steady 20. And away we go. Um, and now my Xbox controller is vibrating for some reason. What? Like, this is it now. Station stop failed, continue to... Yeah, because I couldn't figure out how to open the fucking doors, could I? So, yeah, this is my point, right? Because now, 
I mean, what do I do except, yeah, I mean, there's a speed limit of 40, we're about to hit 40, the light is green. I mean, this doesn't strike me as a game. Ding. No, 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 stop that. I don't want to call it speeding, you know. Might derail the fun train. Okay. Uh, ding. It's green. Uh, hmm. Can we put the wipers on? Yes, we can. And, yeah. There's some screens that, as far as I can tell, don't do anything. And then there's a binging sound. And that's it. I mean, also, you've, like, if it was, <coughs> for want of a better term, a walking simulator, you know, something whereby, am I supposed to stop here? Who even knows? Um, the, the other element of this, if it was a walking simulator, you know, you'd want to look at the view or whatever, but not only is today a particularly grey British day, but, like most of Britain, like the, the bits of Britain people live in, it's a shithole. I mean, look, it's just this grey, depressing mess. How oh, fast am I? How am I? Okay, we're speeding a little bit, but that's fine. I don't think we're going to derail at 45 miles an hour. I, I, I sort of hope not. Oh, 50, sorry. Okay, maybe maybe we'll put the, put the brake on a wee bit. Is that... Yeah, that's actually doing something. That's good. Okay, and then we'll sort of... Yes! I can't believe you have to go to a special college for this. I mean, I've essentially figured it out. Yeah, 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 bing. Does this thing have a radio? I mean, what are you doing here all day? Speed set adjust... Oh, hello! Okay, we're seeing some actual trains. I think, I think we might have to stop here. I'm, I'm just making an assumption. So we'll put some breakage on. Oh, we are speeding. But I'm working on it. Don't... I'm guessing we have to stop here. That's just a guess. Let's take the brake off again. So we roll forward a wee bit. Yes, we do have to stop here. I think. How long is this platform? Long enough. Don't do an emergency stop, Jesus. Keep going. That's it, yeah. It's like the village of the fucking damned. Okay. And then. Doors. Doors are open. Look at that! No. What the hell's this? Is this like for racial profiling or something? Okay, is that everybody? I think that's everybody. Oh, we're waiting for you. Fucking hell. I saw a door close button. Why are the doors now not closing? What have I done to upset you? Okay, doors are closed. Nice, and that's what the beeping sound is presumably for. And... Well, it's a thriller minute over here. Fucking hell. Now, you may think this is fairly harmless, I mean... You know, I don't think the base simulator actually costs that much. But you don't get a lot with it. Um, I think you get two or three scenarios, something like that, which, to be fair, there's sort of... Well, not scenarios, that's the wrong word. You get two or three maps, which have a number of scenarios on them, and you can sort of build your own to a certain extent. But the DLC cost is just obscene. It's genuinely perverse. I mean, we're talking, I think, four figures worth of DLC. And each pack might contain one or two trains and a map and 
handful of scenarios. So, you know, you have to be seriously into your fucking trains to justify that kind of expense. Um, really, I'm doing a public service here. Um, now, I don't know, maybe you've stumbled across this video because you're into this game or something, and I would love, love, love for you to leave a comment to explain what works for you about this, because I understand there can be sort of a cathartic element, right? That, you know, sometimes doing a slow, easy, repetitive task can be somewhat soothing. And I, I can I can enjoy um, Euro Truck Simulator 2. I'll be honest, I'll put my hand up. That is a game that, you know, after a long week at work, you don't want anything particularly stressful or whatever, you just want to unwind, so, you know, you stream a podcast or you put the radio on and you just play that. And there's a there's an element of skill involved because you're in direct control of the vehicle and obviously you know you've got to have your wits about you a little bit. But this just isn't that. It just isn't. It's just you press the forward lever and then you make sure you're not speeding, which we will be doing. Nice, nice way to remind yourself there. Um, and then you listen for the binging sound. And when it, I mean, you don't even have to watch on your own cognizance for the green light because it bings every time you need to look up to check. I tell you what, next time train drivers go on strike, what a piss take. I mean, look, you've got, you're sat in a chair with one window directly in front of your face and you still need a binging sound to remind you to look up at the colour of the light. It just, what is it? I can think of, off the top of my head, four? other rail games where you can watch trains drive around all day. Not from first person, admittedly. That's a truck my gamepad on the floor. In frustration. Um, I don't know if I stop at this station. Let's just... slow it down a wee bit. Um, I'm slowing down too fast, of course. I don't know if this is East Croydon. It certainly looks shitty enough, but you know, you never know. Um, yeah, I mean, especially you know, when you consider stuff like um, train fever. No, don't give a fuck about you. Off we go. Let's get the hell out of here. Um, stuff like train fever, um, Sid Meier's railroads, um, railroad tycoon. And is it Train Valley, the new one, I think? There you go, that's off, just off the top of my head, four train games that are more engaging than this. They have a more direct goal, they have a, a, a bigger element of challenge. Now, I'm sure like connecting one train to another in this is probably quite difficult, simply because, as far as I can tell, the throttle only has a very, very loose relationship to your actual state of acceleration or deceleration. Um, I mean... What the hell's that red light? Is that... Oh, it's a red line. Okay. Maybe that's the speed limit. Um, you know, you just... It's a game that doesn't respect your time. I think especially as an adult gamer, you need a game that respects your time. That's a, That recognises, you know, maybe you've got kids. I mean, I don't. At least none that I'm aware of. Um, you know, that you might only have, like me, um, or, or most people my age, you might only have five, six hours at most a week to do your gaming. Um, you know, there have been weeks where I haven't, you know, I can go nine days without turning my computer on. Um, the only reason I sort of force myself now to find time when, you know, I might be down the pub otherwise is for you guys and because I enjoy doing this, but, you know, you're giving something up all the time. Um, and this game is, is very, very poor at respecting that decision you've had to make to make the investment of time that you're making. Uh, that wasn't really a sentence, but hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. It, it's this... I, it, it's just as bad as games that are full of busy work. You know, what we affectionately call grind. You know, when you're, I don't know, 14, 15 years old, and, you know, you're at school, maybe you don't care about your homework like I didn't, then grind's not necessarily a problem, because you've got a lot of gaming time, so you want a lot of bang for your buck. You know, you might only get a handful of games a year, so you want 70, 80 hours easily out of each one, because you're gaming almost every night. 
but as an adult it becomes more about quality and this is a game where it's the opposite of having the busy work but it's just as bad this is a game with I feel like I could essentially get up, walk away, make a cup of tea, and come back without touching a thing, and complete this scenario. And now, you know, there could be, I, I don't know if it's random or what or not, there could be a red light ahead at some point. There could be. But you don't, you know, it's not, it's not guaranteed, it's not, I, I don't consider looking for a red light to be a game necessarily certainly not one that warrants the level of DLC and the thing is like yeah you get these different models of train and you can look at them from the outside there is an external camera but then you're not really in control which shows either you're not really in control anyway and and your input is so minimal that you can spend most of the game outside your own first person positioning or what you're saying is it doesn't matter what train you're driving because all you can see is the window frame. Um, hello mate. Give him a cheeky pip. Um, I just cannot for the life of me justify... I guess the cost probably comes in because it's such a niche product. And if it is your niche, I, I, I really, not trying to offend you here, I just don't understand. I just do not understand. And I guess I'm starting to show my age a little bit when I start talking like that. Um, it's funny how you, that happens as you get a little bit older. It's like with my Twitter account, actually. Like, I, I see a lot on Twitter at the moment about um, gender pronouns and about how it costs nothing to ask someone what their gender pronoun is. And I agree, it does cost nothing. I think it kind of misses a point, doesn't it? In the sense that, you know, most of us go through life uh, addressing people who um, appear to have a female biological sex as she or her, and men as he, him. And the vast majority of people will always be known by these pronouns. So, you know, if you want to be called by something else, let people know. Don't expect them to ask you. Because you're the exception, not the rule. And that's fine. It's fine to be an exception. It's fine to, you know, be whoever you want to be. But it's it's, it's this assumption that that's the way it should be. And I'm, I'm doing the exact same thing here. And I'm saying that this shouldn't be a game. And that's probably because I don't enjoy it. Doesn't mean it's not valid. So again, please don't take offence if you're a big trainist, if that's the correct word. But I feel like I could be doing almost anything else and this game would be indifferent to whether I died in the process. Is this Croydon? I have no idea. I'm going slow enough that it shouldn't matter. It's finally decided to slow down so it, it takes a while to get used to the momentum as well. I mean obviously I don't know how long this train is because I haven't bothered to look. Come back. Bing. Mm, does that say Knobbery? Well, wherever it is, let's get out. Fuck you, Knobbery. I just... I'm just baffled. That's all. I'm just baffled. I, I, I guess... As I was saying, it comes down to the niche interest element that to a handful of people, you know, a few thousand possibly, this game is something they've been craving for and something they've always wanted. And to be fair, it's probably cheaper than investing in a model train set. So, yeah, maybe that's the argument for it. But the demand is so low that the cost has to be commensurately increased to justify funding the project. Maybe that's it. But, yeah. No. Just no. Thank you very much for joining me. This has been a train that I have done driving on. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, 
look out for some more soon because I have a whole bunch of things that confuse and irritate me and I can find no explanation for. I hope you'll join me to look at those. Thanks again. Bye.